Welcome to round four of the Thundersport GB Championships from Cadwell Park in Lincolnshire. And as you can probably see, a bit of a wet start to the day here for the 2015 Championships. The marshals are just getting themselves uh, prepared and set up, ready for a full day of racing action. Plenty of challenges, twists, turns, and of course, the mountain here at Cadwell Park. Who will be the king of the mountain? Well, you're about to find out. Welcome to Thundersport Elite. Yes, hello and welcome to Cadwell Park. We've moved from Stetterton in Norfolk to Cadwell for round four of the 2015 Championships for Thundersport GB. The pre-national 600s, the Sportsman Elite 600s and the GP1s all in action today. You can see the shivering grid girls here as the riders make their way onto the grid for the first race, the A&R rated pre-national Sport 600s. Darren Ibbotson on the Kawasaki 600 enters this weekend, third overall in the championship. This is the series leader though, number 15, Harry Truelove, a local rider to this circuit. Brendan Malander there, number six, uh, second in the championship. So all the uh, the right men are on the right grid spots at the moment. Further back there, you can see Nick Manger, number 70. The red lights are going to be going on in a moment and we'll get ready for this race. It was a lovely day here yesterday at Cadwell Park. Not so this morning, you can see full wet in order and a packed grid of 600s fly down towards turn one and uh, here we are on board with Harry Trulove the championship leader who immediately has fallen down to second place overall Darren Ibbotson has just gone up the inside and there's a problem there for number 28 Ewan Meston from Aberdeen not able to get his bike going which is a shame for him and the riders now trying to get themselves as far up as possible now the out pre-national 600 championship a series for riders that are yet to attain a national license so there are a few rookies out there with orange bibs on and a few that have been racing just for a year or two this is Darren Ibbotson that leads number 50 the rider from Rotherham the Phoenix race team just a new addition to that Phoenix race team Harry True Love the championship leader there in second place as they go through the newest part of the circuit, the uh, chicane in between Mansfield and the mountain. In third place is Nick Manger, Harry Trulove taking a look over his shoulder. Number six there is Malander. Number seven behind is James May. 67 on the yellow and black triumph just going through the mountain here. It was George Pycroft then at the top of the mountain and through Hall Bends. Incredibly slippery through here, of course, underneath the tree cover. Lots of moss and all sorts being dropped down there. But... Uh, through into the hairpin and then out or up towards Barn Corner, tricky part of this Cadwell Park circuit. So they head out of Barn and onto the start finish straight. Darren Ebbotson it is that leads a rider that uh, this time last year was in a bit of a mess here at Cadwell Park. He broke his black back in two places and He's returning here today in these filthy conditions and doing a very good job indeed. Trying to close that gap down, of course, in the championship overall. Up towards Park Corner we come at the end of the back straight. Nibbetson's got himself a, a handsome lead here. Harry Trulove just looks like he's settled into things. Manger in third place. There's jo uh, James May in fourth. Malander's just tucked in behind Pycroft. The purple and white bike there is Tustin. And then uh, you've got number 60 there, Ash Stone on that uh, line, Green Kawasaki. Out from the gooseneck then, down towards Mansfield Corner. Ugly corner to ride. Uh, downhill, slightly off camber, on the brakes, in the wet as well. Not great, very easy to tuck the front, easy to high side out of as well. Through the chicane they go then, and towards the mountain, the race leaders further back there. You see number 47, Zach Ultram, uh, just leading and Another battle that's going on further back uh, through the grid here. There's some 36 riders that started this race. Points all the way down to 15th. Ibbotson it is that leads at the top of the mountain though. Now heading through Hall Bends. This camera angle really does give you just that uh, idea as to the elevation changes through Hall Bends. Sometimes you can't quite see the fact that it is actually a bit up and down. 
through Hall Bend and then downhill into the hairpin there. There is number 19, another rookie, Shane Taylor from uh, Fendrayton on the Tay Racing Triumph. But it's still Darren Ibbotson that has this advantage from Harry Trulove. Harry Trulove, not bad in the wet. He's uh, there or thereabouts. Of course, you remember Donington Park a couple of rounds ago. He had a, a decent run out in the pre-national 600s. There's May and Tustin going through. Malander here. Number six just falling back a few places into the clutches of number 60, Ash Stone. And then once more, we see rookie Shane Taylor, who's uh, now got himself up into the top eight. There is uh, number 70, it's Nick Manger, currently in third place on that Yamaha on the uh, Manger Brothers racing machine. No surprise then from the team name that he has his brother Chris out in this race as well, number 68. Uh, and he is currently actually just inside the top ten himself. So Ibbotson leads down into Mansfield, Harry Trulove in second. Harry entered this round with a 125 point lead over Brendan Malander. So Second place would do here for Harry, 20 points, and there's, oh dear, oh dear, there's a fall of air, Tustin goes down, and that happened quite early on, actually, out of the gooseneck and down towards Mansfield. The rider's up, and he's limping away a bit. It looked like the fuel was tipping out of that machine there, but Michael Tustin has dropped out of this race. There's James May, number seven. He is currently uh, in fourth place up ahead there of number four Lee Howarth and then George Pycroft on the yellow and black triumph so these guys all battling for some decent places and there is number 90 oh there's a rider gone down here as well and that's Ash Stone through Hall Bends very slippy as we mentioned visors come off there uh, just in case you're wondering he gets back up he's checking his bike you're not allowed to remount the machines uh, at this uh, Thunderbolt GP level. So that's the end of Asher's race. And he was up there inside the top six as well. So the attrition rate starting to rise a little here. Number 50, though. No change there. Nice and easy does it for Darren Ibbotson. It's all about being smooth. You have to adjust your riding style. You can't just ride the same as you do in the dry. You have to be gentle on the throttle, gentle on the brakes. The ide In an ideal world, you have to soften up your suspension play around with your tyre pressures and of course the most notable change, put some wets on, normally comes in handy and uh, here is Harry Trulove then, we go through the newest part of this circuit, I say newest part, how many years now has actually Kane actually been there, he's been there some time, into the mountain, be surprised just how uphill it is actually on the initial approach to the mountain at the bottom of that chicane, over the top of the hill, still a few people there in these uh, horrible conditions watching over at the clubhouse and then through Paul Benz, you can see the lack of adhesion flag there. That was probably just following on from Ash Stone's crash. That's uh, not necessarily an oil flag. Everybody sometimes will see that and initially think of oil, but that is actually a lack of adhesion flag. It can mean that there's some uh, debris still actually on the circuit. Uh, and it's just warning them that they're about to approach a section where that could be. Last lap flag out then for Darren Ibbotson. What a race this has been. And what a difference a year makes after last season. Still Harry Trulove in second, so championship-wise, not an awful lot will change, but uh, there's still a lot of changing for position. Nick Manger looks like he's in a safe third. Ibbotson there is going through quite a bit of traffic. Number 50, that's your uh, race leader, but uh, all sorts of fights going on for the remaining points. There was 888 Joe Lawrence, currently in 14th place. He's up ahead there of Ben Shuttlewood, who's uh, currently in 16th. But around Mansfield then for Darren Ibbotson, and uh, this will mean a lot to him. Number 50, the rider from Rotherham. Just recently changed to the Phoenix race team. He's about to put a lap on number 183, John O'Dowd, on the Kawasaki. You can just hear, just very gently on the throttle. He doesn't want to make any mistakes now over the mountain, and he'll get past that traffic into Hall Bends. There's number three, Rich Richardson. Just gel! <laughs> Almost. Uh, tipping off towards the end of this one and he's about to be, well he's not going to get lapped, he will get another lap in but the race leader is about to pop around the corner, there he is, number 50 and it's a fantastic first race win here, there's absolutely no doubting who's got the 25 points for race one, the first pre-national 600 race win goes to Darren Ibbotson there, what a fabulous performance that was from Darren, you might well look over your shoulder Darren but you've won that one by 7.2 seconds. 
from championship leader Harry Trulove. Nick Major did in the end finish in a lonely third. George Pycroft managed to get past James May and took fourth. And then Lee Howarth was back there in sixth place. Race winner Darren Ibbotson. Winner of the first pre-national 600 race of the day, uh, Darren Ibbotson. Not so fond memories for you in 2014 here at Cadwell. Of course, you broke your back in two places, but here you are, 12 months later, on the top step. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's just something you've got to get over and just keep pushing and think positive about. As a racer, you've just got to put that aside. Harry Trulove is currently championship leader. Um, are you thinking too much about that, or are you just concentrating on your own game? Well, not really. I'm not really pushing for a championship. I'm just making sure that every time I ride, I'm safe and I'm going faster and making personal bests looking at a bigger picture. And uh, there's another race coming up later on, but I'm sure you've got a few people to thank. Yeah, please. Can I thank um, Kilness Tyres, um, Swinton Motorcycles, Ashley Law. Um, can I thank Mick Corrigan, Rob Marshall, Motor Breakers for lending me a rear shock spring at the weekend, and Miller's Oils, Dave, Dave at Phoenix Racing, um, Ideal Travel for kitting me up with my um, levers. Thank you. Well, you'll get another chance to see Darren out in a moment. It's the GB Racing 600 Sportsman Elite after the break. Welcome back to Cadwell Park. It's stopped raining here, but the circuit's still wet. So wet tyres, the uh, order of the day for the GB Racing Sportsman Elite Championship. Matt Trulove is back in the paddock for this weekend. He's been uh, racing between Dunsport and the British Championship. Keenan Armstrong is back as well. Another rider that's uh, used to be on the Aprilia 450 class and the Super Teens and is back with us here this weekend. But there are a few spaces on the grid. One or two riders not made it out here ready for this race. And away we go from the line there. The lights go out and the 600s roar up towards Coppice Corner. Number 26, a good start there for Keenan Armstrong. Championship leader Matt Trulove is number 59. His brother Harry that you just saw a moment ago, number 15, is also out in this race and is already up into second place. Uh, so good news for Harry. In third is Davy Todd, number 23, with the orange vest on. He's a rookie rider. Uh, but has come over from Supermoto, and so he won't mind a uh, bike going a bit sideways. Number 33 there is Ollie Brocklesby from Lincoln, so very much a home round for Ollie. Unlike the pre-national 600s that you just saw, which is a championship for riders that are yet to attain that national license, this is just a step up. Uh, you, this field features some talented riders that can, uh, if they want, move into British Championship from time to time, and the pace is quick. Harry Trulove moves out in front then, through the chicane, a nice move there from him. Davy Todd looking to make a move. Just saw a quick glimpse there of number 18, and that's Lewis Rollo. Remember Lewis, the former Premier Super Team champion of a few years ago, went on to 450s. Well, he's only just turned old enough to jump on a 600. And here he is, number 18. You'll see him in a moment. He's going very well, Super Stock 600s. This Sportsman Elite 600 uh, race, effectively, uh, they all score points collectively, but there is a Formula 600 and a Superstock 600 race within it. Oh, my word! Well, that nearly happened to two or three other riders a moment ago. And uh, that there is number 99, Stephen Kaplan. And he's right in the firing line here. And the rider's doing well to avoid him. He gets up and moves away, but it nearly was a crash for Milo Ward initially. We saw him out of the saddle. Then Dean Mulkey as well. And then Stephen Kaplan, sadly, the rider that has... Uh, bit in the dust and has gone out of this race. Number three going across there was Dean Court, another former 450 rider, but it's Harry Trulove that leads from Keenan Armstrong, Davy Todd, and then we have further back there, Matt Trulove. So uh, Harry Trulove pitting his brother at the moment. There's Dean Mulkey, number 95. We just saw him a moment ago. He's just up behind Milo Ward. Out of the gooseneck and down towards Mansfield. It's Harry Trulove with the lead, number 15. Number 26 there, Keenan Armstrong in second. And you can just see Lewis Rollo. Mentioned him a moment ago. He's in third. Davy Todd, fourth. So the top four at the moment, all of them, super stock, 600 machines. Dean Hipwell is the rider that was missing from the grid at the start. I'm trying to work out who that was. Dean, of course, regular in the British Championship. But he's done a few Thundersport rounds in his time. Very competitive rider indeed. I'm quite impressed to see... So many people uh, on the grandstands here in these pretty ugly conditions. Harry True Love, it is that leads through Hall Benz, though, ahead of Keenan Armstrong. 
Harry's not actually been racing for that long, unlike some of the riders behind. A couple of those riders behind, like Keenan Armstrong and Lewis Rollo in second and third, are actually younger than Harry. But Harry's just not been actually racing on circuits for quite as long, so it just shows you how far he has come. Across the start finish straight we go, and they're already two abreast down the start finish straight. Keenan Armstrong would have to go the long way round if he wants to take the lead here. Lewis Rollo also looking a threat in third. Here, further back, is number 14. That's uh, Tim Neve. Number 139 is Will James from Barton on Humber on that Yamaha. So true love it is, Harry, that leads. His brother, Matt, it's unusual to see Matt behind Harry, is further back in around about fifth place, trying desperately to catch up to the group. There is Rhys Rothwell. Now, uh, there's a battle going on, of course, for the Formula 600. You just saw there Reese fighting with Corey McGreevy. Those guys are fighting it out for the Formulas. Look out for 34 as well. Arnie Shelton, former GP3 runner, raced in uh, British Championship on a Moto3 bike as well. Number 34, uh, he's also out there on a Formula 600 bike. The leading Formula bikes are actually in 8th, 9th and 10th as it stands. This is the outright fight for the lead though. Harry Trulove struggling with traction as he exits the mountain. Lewis Rollo is now up into second place ahead of Keenan Armstrong. Davey Todd in fourth, just about half a second down on these guys. He's part of the leading group, but not quite within touching distance. Here is Tim Neve once more. Brother, of course, twin brother I should add to Tom Neve who's a regular in this championship, although I've not seen Tom out there at the moment. Across to the start, finish straight we go, and Lewis Rollo now on the left of your screen, number 18, is looking to take the lead into Coppice Corner, and does so around the outside. Brilliant move there from Lewis Rollo. Uh, there is number 57, that is your lead uh, in the Formula 600s. Uh, that is Corey McGreevy, and Harry Trulove has retaken the lead into Park Corner, but runs wide. Keenan Armstrong now moves up into second place as a result as well. So Harry, who tried to take the lead, has now dropped back a place. There is Milo Ward, number 41, just up behind Dean Mulcahy. And so those guys are a bit further back in six, seven, eight places. Lewis Rollo leads for Keenan Armstrong. Harry Truler, brilliant racing here. Normally in conditions like this, you see riders clear off into the distance. Unusual to see close battles like this. Uh, on a wet circuit. Lewis Rollo it is that has this advantage now from Harry Trulove who's gone up the inside of Keenan Armstrong. Davy Todd as a result of these guys tripping each other up has now closed the gap down so it is an eight wheel battle for the outright lead. Just in the background there you see Har uh, Matt Trulove in fifth place. On that last lap he pulled a couple of tents on these guys. He wants to be a part of the group that features his brother. Out of the hairpin and through Barn. A really horrible corner to try and navigate. Here's Dean Mulcahy out of the hairpin. Dean at the moment is in sixth place. He's got a head on Milo Ward for now. Look, Lewis Rollo leads from Harry Trulove and Keenan Armstrong. Armstrong, the number 26 there from Doncaster on the Moto Limited Kawasaki. And here is number 41 and number 36. 36 is Callum Ward trying to get by Milo Ward. Uh, the front then, and brilliantly done again from Harry Trulove. He does carry some decent speed into park, but again he runs wide, and he's going to have to make way for Lewis Rollo, but he fights back again, and that's brave from Harry Trulove around a very quick part of the circuit. Harry Trulove leads then from Lewis Rollo and Keenan Armstrong. In fourth is still number 23, the rookie vest of Davy Todd. I'm not quite sure why Harry Trulove's looking over his shoulder at that point, because uh, he must surely know that he's got lots of company here. They exit the chicane and head now towards the mountain. There is number 59 in fifth in the background. That is still Matt Trulove who has been catching this group and might fancy his chances of maybe getting into the po onto the podium. But we're running out of time, so he's going to have to do something pretty quickly. Ca uh, further back, Corey McGreevy and Arnie Shelton still uh, first and second in the Formula 600s. Up ahead of Jamie Boyce, Reese Rothwell and Lee Williams. Oh, a few wobbles there on the exit of the final turn. Trying to find some traction there. Lewis Follow in second, number 18. but. Managed to regroup, last lap flag out. Harry True Love leads from Rollo and Armstrong. Davy Todd in fourth place. Uh, Matt True Love fifth. We just saw Mulkey going through there in sixth. Milo Ward is seventh. Number 36 there is Callum Ward. He's in eighth. And then you should see the battle further back for the Formula 600s. And that's how far back they are. Look at the big gap that we've got. That's actually Tim Neve 
who's uh, in ninth place. And then Corey McGreevy on that white triumph there, number 57, is the race leader in the Formula 600 class. Again, Ari Trulove looks over at his shoulder. This would be a great win in the uh, GB Racing Sportsman Elite, and he might just have enough in the back here to uh, rob poem and take the 25 points. Second place at the moment for Lewis Rollo. Third for Keenan Armstrong and fourth for Davy Todd. Davy Todd's never quite been close enough to make a move. Matt True Love seems to have settled for fifth in the background. Matt, championship leader by four points coming into this round. Uh, oh, a bit of a wobble there from Harry True Love. Maybe the nerves kicking in here in the closing stages of this race. And Lewis Rollo is not afraid of a move. As we go around hall bends and then into the hairpin, Lewis isn't going to get the job done there and he'll have to be on the money if he's to do anything about this now. Around the final corner at Barn, it's going to be a race to the line. The drag race then into the slipstream, trying to get as much traction as possible. Checkered flag is out and Harry Trulove will win race one ahead of Lewis Rollo, Keenan Armstrong and Davy Todd. Brilliant race from the GB Racing Sportsman Elite Championship there. Seven tenths of a second covering the top four. Harry True Love with a win in the Sportsman Elite Championship. His brother Matt finishes in fifth and it's Dean Mulcahy in sixth overall. There you see then Harry True Love, Lewis Rollo and Keenan Armstrong, the Super Stock 600 winners. And then Corey McGreevy, Arnie Shelton and Jamie Boyce in the formulas. GB Racing, Sportsman Elite, the top three overall in the Superstock 600s. What a race that was. Uh, obviously started off raining this morning, Keenan. Started to dry up, but uh, you must have enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was, it was a bit difficult with the coming out of the corners with it sliding and stuff in the drier places, but yeah, it was good. You got anyone to thank at all? Yeah, I'd like to thank my mum, dad, all the people from Oxford who give me money, and a uh, big thanks to John O, who gives me all the tips and uh, Commercial Fleet Services, Patrick Flanagan. Well done to you, uh, Keenan. We'll move on to the, the top two now. Lewis Rollo, it's good to have you back. Obviously, you're out there on a 600, uh, a little different to a 450 that we're, uh, of course, used to seeing you out there on. Very close race there between you and Harry. Uh, it was sort of a toss of a coin as to who was going to win it. You just missed out, though. Yeah, well, this is our, obviously we're really happy. First meeting down at Thundersport, because um, I've only turned 16 last week. Uh, I was only able to ride in Scotland with my dispensation on the Charlotte's Kawasaki. Um, but I turned 16 last Thursday and we thought we'll come down to Cadwell um, to see how we get on and see what the competition's like. And yesterday never really went to plan, came off and qualifying, but um, today we just got our head down, stuck in and got up to the front and uh, had a ba brilliant battle with Keenan and Harry and uh, just loved it. Well, there's uh, more of that to come later on as well. Anyone to thank at all, Lewis? Um, Charlotte's Kawasaki, they've given me the 600 for this season, um, so a big thanks to them. Lee Mack Oils, um, Rob Eard Oils, Prentice Coaches, uh, Robbie Burns Haulage, um, Mum, Dad, Al McIntosh for helping us, um, just everybody. Well done to you. We move on now to the race winner in the uh, Sportsman Elite 600, Harry True Love. Big smile on your face. It's always good to win those ones because they're competitive, but that was there was all sorts going off on, in that race. And of course, there was a dry line appearing as well. So uh, how was it for you? Oh, it was, uh, I got a really good start, so I was really happy to get right behind Keenan. And then when I got around the lead and up to the mountain, I thought I might be able to just hold him off for, for a while. But then Rollo, oh, <laughs> Rollo came fast and he was like, I wasn't sure whether I was able to stay with him because he was so fast around all the uh, crater curves and old hairpin and that. And uh, I was just uh, I was struggling to stay with him and I made a mistake and Keenan came past and it was, I was, I was a bit scared, but I managed to pull it back and eventually hold on at the last lap. Of course, just one small little thing uh, to add as well. Uh, you beat your brother. Uh, <laughs> he couldn't quite catch up with you. No, yeah, he didn't have a very good start, did he? But it was... Uh, I'd, I'd looked behind a few times and didn't see him, so I didn't know what had happened, but I was just looking, I'm glad he didn't fall off, but it's always good to beat him. <laughs> Anyone to thank at all? Uh, massive thanks to Science Express for doing all the sticker jobs on my fairing, and I'd also like to thank my family for coming out, because they're, they're always a huge help. Don't go anywhere, folks. More racing action coming up after the break. It'll be time for the Stewart Events Thundersport GP1. Welcome back to Thundersport Elite here at Cadwell Park, round four of the championships in 2015. It's now time for, I suppose you could call, the, the main event at Thundersport GB, the GP1 class, the, uh, the largest capacity motorcycle class that we have in the championship, and always one or two names to know. Billy Meller, remember Billy? 
Kid's been around for a while now. Very competitive rider there on the uh, Able Racing BMW. Curtis Wright, the championship leader overall. Adam Shelton probably needs no introduction if you're a regular in terms of watching this championship. Number 61 on the Scruffs Racing Kawasaki. A lot of high profile names that race in this. Matt Trudeau, we just saw a moment ago, number 59, uh, in the GB Racing Sportsman Elite. There he is just going through that. He is actually out on his 600, just to point that out. Now, the rain has cleared a bit, and so the majority of the field, in fact, I'd be very surprised if anyone has gone out there on anything other than the dry tyre option. We have super stock bikes and GP1 machines out there. GP1 machines slightly more powerful in terms of the fact that they are allowed to. Uh, tune the motorcycles if they want and they can have slick tyres although I'm not sure if I want them right at this particular moment in time. There's Peter Hobday from Bury St Edmunds uh, just going through. Adam Shelton leads number 61 on the orange bike ahead of Curtis Wright and Billy Miller. Number four there is Craig Neve. Craig from Immingham on the uh, Cormac Flexi Hydraulic Kawasaki and then in fifth place at the moment that's Michael Neves number 33 on that Outstandingly beautiful BMW that's very well turned out. There's Matt Truloff up ahead of 164. Matt Stevenson. Matt Stevenson is one of our pre national thousand runners within this class and at the moment is uh, in fifth place overall in that championship. Michael Mace, number 63, is the rider that leads that. But you can see here a full grid of uh, Superstock 1000s and GP1 bikes as they exit. Oh, my word, Matt uh, True Love there. Went a bit wide out of the hairpin. There's Sam Boyers just going through. Number 169 last year's pre-National 1000 champion. Across the line we go. 61 then, Adam Shelton, who's the Superstock 1000 championship leader, ahead of Curtis Wright. These two have been battling each other for years. Last year, of course, both Curtis Wright, number 74, and Adam Shelton, 61, were fighting it out for the Sportsman Elite 600 Championship and now Curtis Wright goes up ahead of Adam Schultz so they know each other very well. I wouldn't say that they're best buddies of circuit but there's certainly enough respect out there for one another but I suppose when you're fighting each other for championships week in week out uh, you're not going to be sending each other Christmas cards. There's Billy Mellor -ho 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 -ho, down into Mansfield and Adam Shelton didn't even see that one coming. Billy Mellor almost wiped out the front wheel there of Adam but Meller it is that has taken second place away from Adam Shelton in the background there. Craig Neve trying to find a way into this uh, battling trio out front. Number 11 there is Stephen Parsons on the Giraffe Racing Kawasaki just going through the mountain. And uh, he's up ahead of Curtis Rothwell who's a nice to see Curtis back out there again from Bolton. On the PRF racing, Suzuki having a decent run out. Number nine there is Nick Williamson. Nick, who races in the uh, Golden Era Superbike Championship and, of course, the GP ones. He's going rather well at the moment. He's uh, well up inside the points in the top 12. Across the line, Curtis Wright leads ahead of Billy Mellor. Further back there, Parsons, number 11, Curtis Rothwell. 57 is Simon Lowe. These guys from 7th onwards, bit of a wobble there for number 181, that's uh, Neil Watson from Pusey on the British Army race team Honda. Billy Mellor then, starting to close in now on Curtis Wright, that battle for first and second. Further back there is Nick Williamson, number 9, just being challenged by 169 Sam Boyers from Leyland on the Autosmart Honda. And here comes Billy Mellor, he's done exactly the same thing again, and that's... Uh, he doesn't leave his uh, opponents much room, does he, down into Mansfield at all. And that sat Curtis right up. And now he's fallen into the hands of Adam Shelton. So Billy Mellor has got out front. A couple of aggressive moves there. They're, I suppose, well, they're legal moves and they're, they're clean enough, but they're borderline clean uh, from Billy Mellor there as he flies through number 87, the rider from Barnsley. Good to have him out there with us, an incredibly talented rider. I remember around about five, six years ago when he first came onto the scene and uh, went into the British Championship. His name was mentioned quite a few times. Uh, he's uh, mixed and matched all sorts of championships over the years, but he does love his racing. There's 33, Michael Neves. Michael on the uh, Prime Factors Racing BMW from Peterborough, of course, an MCN reporter, so he's often um, off around the world, road testing machines on circuits. There he is, 33. Up ahead of Shane Pearson, last year's Golden Era Superbike champion, was having a good 
what a weekend here. The rider from Derby on the SG Transport train in Kawasaki. There's Parsons and Rothwell. That's eighth and ninth. Then Simon Lowe, former GP3 rider, the very first year of Dunstall GP. Up ahead then of Nick Williamson and Sam Boyers. Billy Meller it is that leads out of the gooseneck and down towards Mansfield. In the background there, just in second and third place, Curtis Wright is not looking in a safe second, is he? Adam Shelton on the orange and black cross race and Kawasaki closing in on him. There's a green flag there being held up uh, at the chicane and that means that uh, that section of the circuit is clear, which means that uh, we more than likely we had a bike that has gone straight on or something. I heard an engine rumbling at the bottom of the uh, Mansfield just a moment ago, so I wonder if someone's just gone straight on. Number 164 there is uh, Matt Stevenson. Matt is currently leading the pre-national thousand race within a race. Uh, he's got that orange bib on, so relatively new to the championship. He's up there ahead of number six, Sean Evans, and number 92, Matt Johnston. So these are your leading three, and then fourth place, number four, Craig Knee. Matt Trulove does go wide, doesn't he? Out of the hairpin uh, for tipping into Barn Corner. There's Curtis Wright and Adam Shelton. This new battle for second and third, and Adam trying to find a way past. Kawasaki in third there, just behind the BMW. Another BMW it is that leads, though, Billy Mellon, number 87. A rider that's, for so many years, spent most of his time out on Hondas. Uh, but until recently has moved on to BMWs. There is Simon Lowe, number 57, out on the crank race in Kawasaki, the rider from Twickenham. Mella so far in control of things out front. It's the first round that Benny Mella's attended this year, so he's uh, not a threat in the championship, so to speak. Curtis Wright leads GP1 points overall, and there's a change there for second place as Adam Shelton has taken now second place uh, ahead of Curtis Wright, so we'll close that gap down. Adam himself of course, uh, leading the Super Stock Thousands uh, Championship. But Billy Meller is on a stock bike at the moment, so he would take 25 points in the Stock Thousand Championship. There's the top three have gone through then. Craig and Eve there, number four, is in fourth place. Now coming through all bends. You flick left, then right, then left, then right, then left, and right, into the uh, hairpin. And then a short stretch to Barn Corner and downhill towards the start the finish line. And the last lap flag is out then for Billy Meller, lapping in the 131. This is dry, but it's still a bit slippery here and there. Bit of debris on the circuit there for Craig Neve in fourth place. He's up ahead still with Matt Trulove, Michael Neves, Shane Pearson, and Stephen Parsons. Matt Stevenson it is, as I mentioned, that still leads the pre-nationals. And here is 57, Simon Lowe, still leading that battle for 10 ahead of Sam Boyers, who's been trying to find a way past now for three or four laps. Is there going to be any change here for second or third? Doesn't look like it. Curtis right there in third. Maybe not quite his weekend. He's been very sharp all season long, but probably just thinking about the championship in these uh, iffy conditions. Saw there Stephen Bates, number 161, being lapped by your race leader. Over the mountain then, in front of the crowd, big wheelie. He's now coming up to lap another couple of other riders as well. Michael Mace is there, number 63. Dave Murphy, number 692 there on the Ducati. And Billy just sits up Michael Mace here in the closing stages, going about his business. And then he will see the chequered flag in just a moment as he tries to find a way past 692. 692 will get another lap. Billy Mello wins it here in race one and in the background there Curtis Wright is not going to be able to catch up with Adam Shelton. Shelton takes second place ahead of Curtis Wright. Craig Neve finishes in fourth. Matt Trudeau does well uh, in fifth place. Michael Neves in sixth. So on the podium there Billy Meller the winner overall in GP1 ahead of Adam Shelton and Curtis Wright and of course Billy Meller wins the Superstock Thousands ahead of Adam Shelton and Craig Neve also. In the pre-national thousands, Matt Stevenson, the winner from Matt Johnston and Gary Woodward. Winner of GP1 and Superstock Thousands uh, combined. Billy, it's been a while since uh, we've had a word of you up on the top step here, but great to have you back here with us and uh, a very competitive race, which you managed to get on top of in the end. Yeah, yeah. Well, tough battle with Curtis and Adam to start with. Uh, family rhythm uh, and pulled away. Made a few mistakes, uh, but then got me head back down and pulled away, really. You got anyone to thank at all? Yeah, a few big thanks really to uh, Gary at Able Engineering, 
uh, Ryan and Scott at Darkside Development, Steph at SRS Automotive, uh, my mum and dad. Winner of the first pre-national thousand race here at Cadwell Park, always a tricky circuit. Um, I'm sure you probably earlier on were wondering whether it's going to be full wet, but in the end, uh, you managed to get the pre-national win. Yeah, yeah, good, good race, you know, I looked look back just uh, last lap and I saw uh, other lad were right on me, so I just pushed on, pushed on, rid a wide line and just sort of kept him off luckily, so went well really, yeah. So far a good weekend and a good season then? Well, so far, yeah, I'm going to be doing all next season definitely with you, yeah. Never thought I'd be going this well late, you know. I, I raced last year, done it and we had finished about 24th overall, so it's just practicing it, we're getting there. Not bad for the second year, I suppose, but we'll get there. Anyone to thank at all? Yeah, obviously my dad, Jim and Hillary again, for uh, help this weekend. And uh, Lloydie for bringing me uh, Van Brock down at Wade to and I forgot to mention him last time. Brought some injectors down for it, and we got them bunged in and turned up at three o'clock in the morning for test day. But yeah, if it weren't for him, we wouldn't have made it to Snetterton. So cheers, lad. And, yeah, brilliant. Thanks. Thanks very much. We see that winning, overtaking manoeuvre again. Join us again after the break for the pre-national 600s race two. Welcome back to Cadwell Park then. And uh, well, you can see it's a bit windy. The grid girls hats blowing off here, ready for the start of the INR Racing Pre-National Sport 600. Race winner from earlier there, Darren Ibbotson, number 50. Brendan Malander will be happy that it's dried out here. He uh, won a race here yesterday at Cadwell Park. Harry Trudov, the championship leader, you just saw him a little while ago picking up the Sportsman Elite 600 race win. Nick Major as well. This is the onboard camera. For Harry True Love, you can see he's got some fresh rubber on. The lights go out and away we go. Decent start there for Darren Ibbotson and Harry True Love, first and second. Not quite the same for Brendan Mallinder in third, I'm afraid, as they head up towards Coppins for the first time. A grippy left hand of this, and then a lovely move there from Harry True Love to go into the lead into Charlie's in. And then it just drops down here off camber into Charlie's out and onto the park straight. It's called a straight, although you can see from here. It's certainly not really straight at all. It's a kick left. Great camera footage here then for race leader Harry Trulove as he charges towards park corner ahead of Darren Ibbotson. Brendan Malander is in third. So he's managed to recover from that slightly iffy start. He'll fly through and up towards uh, Chris Curve. So that's we just. Uh, Saw a bit further back was 131 Greg Scanlon. There's George Pycroft, yellow bike up the inside of James May into Mansfield Corner. Harry True Love it is that leads then through the chicane up ahead of Darren Ibbotson. Brendan Mallander in third place is number six on the Honda. Ash Stone, who went down at Hall Benz in race one, then in fourth. There's Ben Shuttlewood up ahead of Lee Howard. And that there, 222 on the sky blue and black. Foster Cold Stores Yamaha is Middlesbrough's rider Jack Little. Jack, who's done very, very well so far this week. Yesterday, he did a superb job from the back of the grid to get himself a couple of top 10 finishes. And so uh, keep an eye on Jack as he progresses. He's moved from the Thunder Sport 500 Championships. Across the line we go there. Harry Trulove in control of this one so far from Ibbotson and Malander. There's Ash Stone in fourth, Pycroft fifth, then James May. Then Manger, Shuttlewood, there is number four, Lee Howarth. And then it is Jack Liddle. A couple of orange vests there for one or two other riders going through your shot. But Harry Trulove so far in control. What a season it's been for Harry, of course. He started off last season in the Mini Twins as a rookie. And uh, towards the end of the season started featuring on the podium on a regular basis. And this year has moved on to a 600 for the first time and has really hit the ground running. Proper talent. Matt Trulove, who so far has been, I suppose you could argue, the most talented of the brothers he's, in terms of his success so far, said that he's most worried of all about Harry Trulove uh, looking ahead because he's a lot calmer and he's got a completely different thought process when it comes to races. He's very laid back. He seems to be cool, calm, collected which Matt seems to think will hold him in good stead in the future, whereas I think Matt, by his own admittance, sometimes can get a little hot-headed. Uh, nevertheless, the pair of them are incredibly talented brothers, 
uh, who have not been racing for that long. Number 26 there is Dean Young, regular in the paddock from Romsey on the two wheels warehouse Yamaha. Nice to see Dean out there here enjoying his racing at Cadwell. Harry True Love's lead has extended then just by a couple of tenths to uh, number 50 down in it. So he's coming under attack now from Brendan Malander on that Yamaha, on that Honda, sorry. The Team Mally Honda, rider from Rotherham. Got a few, quite a few fans here with him this weekend. I know he's down in Park Fernlane, Brendan Malander, uh, number six. The six hundred flying past the start-finish line and uh, battles going on all the way down to 32nd. We've only got 32 in this race as opposed to the 36 we started the day out with. Uh, that's due to uh, the attrition rate. So there has been a change there for second place as Brendan Ballander has just got his nose up ahead of Darren Ibbotson now, which is good news for Harry True Love because Darren Ibbotson looked like he'd be the rider that would threaten him the most this weekend. Although Brendan Ballander is second overall in the championship coming into this weekend. I think that both Brendan and Darren will be almost locked on points by the, the end of today. There is Brendan then in second up ahead of Darren. Number 50 there. Excellent performance from Darren in the wet this morning. And yesterday, both he and, he and Harry Trulove were involved in a fantastic battle. Uh, then Harry Trulove went down at the bottom of the mountain. Darren Ibbotson had a huge lead, but then managed to crash on the exit of the mountain uh, and left himself right in the middle of the circuit and uh, the rest of the riders having to avoid. He then jumped on his bike again, which isn't allowed in Thundersport GB rules, but he didn't realise at the time. He said he just sort of let uh, it all get the better of him, uh, but hadn't checked his brakes. He went charging into four bends and uh, was going onto the grass. There was all sorts of motocross skills going on and unfortunately ended up crashing again. Uh, and that time definitely was out of the race. Brendan Malander was there to pick up the spoils. There is number four. That's Lee Howarth up ahead of Ben Shuttlewood. Number 888 is Joe Lawrence. Number 108 is Matt Dawes. These riders uh, at the moment just inside the points. Got Chris Ranger there as well. Joey Taylor, Rich Richardson, Sam Matthews all fighting for the remaining points. This is the battle for second then and it's changed again. Darren Ibbotson now, the race winner from earlier. Has taken second back off Brendan Mallon. We're on board now with Harry True Love. Brilliant camera shot there of him exiting the gooseneck and down into Mansfield and then the short stretch up towards this new chicane. Right, then left, careful of those white lines, and then short stretch now up to the mountain. As you see here, it's uphill, almost blind. Flick right and then over the top of the hill before heading into Paul Ben. There's a few members of the crowd watching from the clubhouse. Right, then left, then right. You get dizzy, don't you? Going through Hall Benz, breaking hard for one of the ugliest corners in motorcycle racing. Really tricky, that one, that hairpin. And then Barn Corner, you can see the trees overhanging. It's very slippery there. But uh, great to see some camera footage all the way through Hall Benz and now onto the start, finish straight, all the way up into top gear and into Coppice Corner. That is your race leader, Harry Trulove, who's on his way to another 25 points to extend his championship lead. There's Ash Stone, and number seven is James May from Oxford on the JM Racing Yamaha, number 67. George Pycroft from Misham on the Arden Racing Motorcycles Triumph. Harry Trulove, it is though, number 15 from Lincoln as well. So it's his home round, him and Matt. Got a few uh, members of the family, and friends, over to watch uh, him and Matt. There is the uh, KLM sponsorship on the side of Jack Liddell's Foster Cold Stores Yamaha. True love in complete control. You can see the sun's out now, the shadows uh, underneath the Harry True Love there on circuit, considering the rainy start that we had to this morning. It's starting to turn into a rather nice day. Now, Darren Ibbotson has lost Brendan Malander. He's managed to stay in second place. He looks like he's actually closing down on Harry True Love a bit here, but we're at uh, that stage of the race now where Harry is pretty much in control of this, and it would take quite a big mistake now from Harry True Love for Darren Ibbotson to have uh, any chance at a nibble of a race win. They exit the hairpin and head towards Barn Corner, downhill, off camber, and now onto the start finish straight. Just one more lap then of this Cadwell Park circuit for Harry True Love, and that gap that he's got out front should be 
enough. There is Darren Ibbotson in second place. And where? Oh, we've got red flags. We've got red flags here. Brenda Manager's just gone through. Red flags are going to bring an end to this race now. With the last lap flag out, that race will be declared. I uh, do hope that everyone is all right. Harry Trulove will be the winner, though. It looked like he had that one in the bag anyway. Ibbotson will take second. Brendan Malander, third. Ash Stone is confirmed as fourth overall. James May, fifth. George Pycroft in sixth. There's your top three, then. Harry Trulove, Darren Ibbotson, Brendan Malander. We'll catch up with Harry in a bit. 319 points sent to Harry. Look at that huge lead over Brendan Malander, who's just three points ahead of Darren Ibbotson in the battle for second overall. Winner of the pre-national 600 race two, championship leader Harry Trulove. Harry, it was a bit tricky this morning and Darren Ibbotson got the better of you, but this afternoon it dries out and uh, you've extended your championship lead again. Yeah, this morning it was definitely tricky. Uh, Visor fogged up and I couldn't see where I was going, but every now and then cleared up and I managed to get a bit of a clear run again and uh, we're off, hopefully. <laughs> All in all, it's been a very successful season for you, but uh, this must mean a lot to you, especially with it being your home circuit as well. Yeah, it's always good to win when everyone's watching. No one normally comes and watches, like friends and that, but when they're all here, it's always definitely a lot better to win. Anyone to thank? Uh, just my family for coming out again, and uh, Adam Marshall for sorting the bikes out. Well done to Harry, some fantastic onboard shots there. Join us again after the break for Sportsman Elite 600s. Welcome back to Cadwell Park then. Quite breezy, but not wet as it was uh, this morning. There's Keenan Armstrong, number 26, who was featured in that race one. Great race that. Matt Trulove then, the championship leader heading into this weekend. There is Keenan. Harry Trulove's out there again, who just won uh, before the break. This is Dean Hipwell, who's out on circuit this time on CDH Racing Triumph. So nice to see Dean out there. He has to be seen as the favourite for this race. In the dry conditions, some of the pre National 600 riders won't be quite as competitive. Let's not forget that this is the elite 600 race. In the wet, it's uh, just levelled the, the playing field out a little. And Harry had a great chance there, which is why he managed to get that race win. I'm not saying Harry will be finishing 20th or anything like that, but. Uh, his chances of winning might be a little harder this time. Here we are on board of the Moran Charlies. And he's uh, just up behind Davey Todd, who was fourth in race one. The yellow bike then just ahead of him is Lee Williams, number 94, who uh, had a race to forget a little while ago after getting a good start. But now we see Harry Trulove charging up towards Park Corner, and he might just have to get the brakes on and squeeze them a little harder. He goes up the inside of Davey Todd. He's already up ahead of his brother, uh, so it's good news for him. 600s flying around Park Corner, number 66 there is uh, Christian Slater from Spalding, but it's Dean Hipwell that leads overall, Dean uh, number 74 from Doncaster, seen him out on one or two occasions at Thundersport at Mallory Park and here at Cadwell before, and uh, always very, very tough to beat a British super sport rider. Keenan Armstrong second, Lee Williams in third, and now we're on board with Harry Trulove in fourth. Around the mountain and up over the top. Look at Lee Williams getting some air there. The uh, former supermoto rider, he'll love that. The rider from Liverpool there, he'll be rewinding that and playing it over and over again to his mates, I'm sure. Fantastic shots. Oh, down into the hairpin. Harry leaves the door open and his brother takes fourth spot away and says, thank you very much, bro and moves up into fourth overall. Matt means business, of course. He wants to get as many points as possible. Baby Todd there has just been behind. Then it's Lewis Rollo, number 18. Milo Ward, and then Tim Neve is number 14 on the red bike. Number three going through there is Dean Court. 86 is uh, Rick Savile and 129 Jeff Boo. Back on board with Harry Trulove, and he's lost another place. Baby Todd has got back past him again now into Charlie's corner. So Harry just having a lap here where he's uh, losing a bit of ground and he's got a couple of mighty competitive riders coming up behind him as well. There's your race leader, Dean Hipwell, and already got a huge lead over Keenan Armstrong and Lee Williams who just got the big air a moment to go. And but drops down now to fourth. Matt True Love is on the move. He moves up into third place overall. There's Davey Todd as well now closing on Lee Williams. Lee Williams uh, incidentally a Formula 600 rider. Now Dean Hipwell out front because he's a British super sport runner is also on a Formula bike as well. So Dean effectively winning the Formula 600 battle. Further back, 
behind Davy Todd. There's uh, all sorts of battles going on. See, Lewis Rollo has now gone up ahead of Harry Trulove as well. So the former Prillia Super Team champion. He's been racing in this paddock now for so many years that you can sort of forget the fact that he's, uh, he's still, you know, in his low teens. It's still in his mid-teens. He'll be in his mid-teens now. Uh, sometimes so difficult to forget. It's a bit like Kyle Ride, of course, a rider that we've seen in this paddock once or twice before he entered that British, uh, World Supersport round as a wild card a few weeks back and got himself second place, a third place overall. He was on the podium. And when, uh, you know, you find out that he's just 17, it's, uh, it's a remarkable, really. But the youngsters that come through the Super Team Championship, great to see. There's a couple of uh, riders that haven't come through Super Teams there. David Todd and Lee Williams, they've both come through the Supermoto uh, Championships of Britain. And uh, it seems to be the case that if you're on a Supermoto bike, the uh, transition onto road racing seems to work out quite well. You're on board there with Harry Trulove, struggling a bit in this race at the moment, Harry. Uh, it was that Lewis Wallow or Corey McGreevy just up ahead of him. We'll get confirmation of that in a moment. No one seems to be able to catch up with race leader Dean Hipwell at the moment. But this is the battle for second. Keenan Armstrong ahead of Matt Trulove, 26 and 59. And then Davey Todd, number 23. Davey from Saltburn, from privately run Kawasaki. There is number 95, Dean Mulkey from Sutton in Ashfield on the Phoenix Race Team bike. And he's just lost a, a place there. Number 44, Jamie Boyce, who was uh, another Formula 600 runner, so we want to get that place back as soon as possible. In the Formula 600, by the way, as we entered this weekend, both Rhys Rothwell and Lee Williams were locked on points. They were both on 132 points at the top of the championship, with Jamie Boyce on 107. There is Boyce, number 44, up ahead of Dean Mulkey. Now then, Max Trulove has got ahead of Keenan Armstrong for second overall on the Yamaha there. The white, red and black machine. But this is your race leader, Dean Hipwell. He has the advantage over Matt Trulove. Keenan Armstrong second. Davy Todd now in fourth place overall. Davy Todd with that rookie vest on. His first full season of racing. There is your leader. Heading into the mountain, Matt Trulove then has done, he's uh, made it hard work for himself. He had to work early on to fly through the field, including going past his brother. Keenan Armstrong still third, David Todd fourth. Lee Williams there in fifth, but second overall in the Formula 600s. Through Hall Benz. Keenan Armstrong started out as a super team and then last year was on 450s and came on really strong at the end of the season. Just out of nowhere, suddenly started picking up some podiums, and since then it's looked really, really strong. And both he and Matt at the moment have been contesting in the British Championship at Superstock 600 level. You may have seen some decent footage of Matt recently uh, over at Alton Park with a massive moment that he had. Uh, check that one out. We're on board here with Harry True Love. Number 15. At the moment, Harry's still inside the top eight overall. As we head around Charlie's, he's now going to try and get in the slipstream onto the park straight. And that's Lewis Rollo that he's just gone past into park corner. Can he hold it? Tighter than it looks, park corner. It really does close up on you on the exit there. But good move from Harry. So Harry retakes, in fact, sixth place from uh, Lewis Rollo there. There's absolutely no one catching Dean Hipple at the moment. He's lapping the 131s. And uh, that's the lap record completely destroyed. Craig Neve had the old lap record. And so Dean Hipwell has uh, said goodbye to that one. Matt Trulove still in second place. The super stock lap record was a 32.2. And these guys in second, third and fourth at the moment are in the mid 132s. So they're not quite able to get that lap record just yet. So the top four have all gone through. There's Lee Williams, number 94, on the high-tech coatings, Kawasaki, rider from Liverpool. Matt Trudeau, for the moment, for the time being, is on to win the Superstock 600 battle. There is his brother Harry, up ahead of Lewis Rollo, now into Coppers Corner. And then back to your leader, who's coming up to some traffic. Number 74 on the CDH Racing Triumph, going around the outside there at Chris Curve. On board here with Harry Trudov and Lewis Rollo now 
squeezes up the inside of him into Park Corner. So the young Scott makes up another place. Interesting to follow the route of Lewis Rollo over the next uh, few months as he's finally moved on to a 600 now and allowed to ride. It's just been held back purely because of his age. Now he's finally old enough to ride it. He's on it and uh, he's been racing over in Knock Hill as well, getting as many laps as possible. Number 66 is Christian Slater from Spalding. There's Matt True Love. These guys are just being lapped at the moment. Uh, number 66 there, Christian, just having a look over his shoulder uh, at Matt. There is the, the last up flag then for Dean Hipwell, who has got about a five, six second lead now over Matt True Love. Then it's Keenan Armstrong and Davy Todd, and Davy Todd closing in. Matt True Love looking good then for second overall and the win in the Superstock class. Uh, Matt himself was a, a faller, just like his bro, exactly the same place as his brother, he felt yesterday here at Cadwell at the bottom of the mountain. This is Lewis Rollo who's looking good for sixth place which would be fourth in class ahead of Harry Trulove. That battle not over yet. Mansfield corner then for Dean. He exits. Still a bit of traffic to deal with which is why he's looking over his shoulder to see uh, whether or not he has to make any last gasp moves. A bit of a wheelie on the exit of the chicane. There is Keenan Armstrong though. He's taken second place off Matt Trulove and he's robbed Matt Trulove here right in the latter stages of this race. It's going to be difficult for Matt to take that one. He'll be frustrated with that one. Uh, your race leader is wheeling over the mountain and into Hall Bends. Let's see then. Keenan Armstrong is the second overall here and Matt Trulove struggling. Davy Todd is now closing on him as well. So Matt, who looked very strong on the penultimate lap, has all of a sudden lost a bit of ground here. I don't think he's going to be able to get that one back. He will be a frustrated local rider. He's looking over his shoulder. He's just realised he's got another one behind him. Dean Hitwell takes the race win overall at the Formula 600. And Keenan Armstrong, with a great move into that chicane, then finishes second and takes the Superstock 600 win ahead of Matt Trulove and Davey Todd. Fourth that place then, yeah, just mentioned David Todd, Lee Williams is fifth, the Formula 600 rider, second in class, Lewis Rollo finished sixth ahead of Harry Trulove who had the onboard camera and Corey McGreevy as well. So it is Dean Hipwell, Lee Williams and Corey McGreevy the top three in the formulas, Keenan Armstrong, Matt Trulove and Davey Todd the top three in the Super Stocks. Let's see the points then as we head into Alton Park next, not a lot in it, Davey Todd has taken the lead of the championship by 11 points ahead of Matt Trulove who in turn is just 10 ahead of his brother. Very close championship indeed. In the formulas, it's Lee Williams with the advantage ahead of Reese Rothwell now. Jamie Boyce third, Corey McGreevy fourth, then Jarvis Adams and Charlie Morris. And in the Super Stock 600, it's Davey Todd that has the advantage there as well over Harry Trulove, Matt Trulove, Milo Ward, Dean Mulkey and Jordan Rushby. Winner of the uh, Sportsman Elite Formula 600 as well, Dean Hipwell. Always good to have you around here at uh, the Odd Thunder Sport meeting. Uh, you enjoyed yourself here? Yeah, it's been good. I love coming here. You know, it's, it's run fantastically and uh, it's always good racing. Yeah, I enjoy it. Anyone to thank at all? Yeah, I just want to give a massive thanks to my mum and dad. My mates helped me out. Uh, Blade and Electrical, uh, Best Services, Parky Racing, uh, Selby Signs, Auto Refurb, everyone else. My massive thank you. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Five down, one to go. The second race for the Stewart Events Thunder Sport GP ones coming up after this short break. Welcome back to the final part of Thunder Sport Elite from Cadwell Park, round four of the championships. Earlier on, we saw a race win in the GP1 class for Billy Meller ahead of Adam Shelton and Curtis Wright here on the uh, BMW. There was Adam Shelton, Scruffs Racing Kawasaki. He managed to finish second in race one. And there is Billy Meller, the race winner on the team. Abel Racing BMW, he took that victory in race one. Further back there, number four, Craig Neve. Number 59, Matt Trulove again. Shane Pearson, number 35, and Michael Neve, number 33. We look to the lights in the top left corner. As soon as they go out, we're ready to go. A terrible start from Billy Meller there. And he has got a bit of work to do in the early stages. Number 87 has been eaten alive at the start as they fly up towards Coppice Corner. It looks like Curtis Wright had the whole shot. Now we go through Charlie's down the back, straighten it into Park Corner. Curtis Wright has the lead from Adam Shelton. Matt Trulove is in third. 
And, uh, well, not a brilliant start at all from the race one winner, number 61 there. It's actually 161, that's Stephen Bates. Right lead from Shelton, Matt Trulove third, Craig Lee fourth, Billy Meller fifth. Then it's Michael Neves, number 33, Shane Pearson, number 35. And a bit of a gap back to Simon Lowe and Stephen Parsons. Curtis Wright, who has been the championship leader for a few rounds now. Not been quite as dominant this weekend as we're used to seeing. From here, by the way, the Thundersport Championship, of course, moves to Alton Park next. And that's a one-day event for the championship. And then from Alton Park, we go to Rockingham. Then it's Anglesey, uh, the island of northwest Wales. And it's Donington Park GP circuit before returning back to Cadwell Park for the series finale. The first time that's happened in Thundersports history. Let's just hope that the sun's shining when we reach there uh, 17th and 18th of October. Although I have uh, some fear that I might be arriving there with some sort of uh, woolly jacket on. <laughs> We'll see what happens. It is at the moment, though, at the front here in this Stewart Events Thundersport GP1 race. Curtis Wright, who seems to have got his mojo back again here for this one, ahead of Adam Shelton. Billy Mellor's starting to close up again now. There's uh, Michael Neves and Shane Pearson. So Billy Mellor's kind of given in the rest of the opposition a bit of a handicap here. And he's now in fourth place, just behind Craig Nee. Matt Trulove there, number 59. Forget he's on a 600, he's on his super sport bike, so he's doing very well to keep up with these guys. Billy Meller there having a look up the inside. I tell you what, he's not afraid, is he? He leaves it late and he's just dived right up the inside there of Craig Neve, who's been caught out by it, and in turn now has lost another place uh, to Matt True Love. So Craig Neve's just lost two places in the space of around about 100 meters. There's Curtis Wright, the leads from Adam Schultz. Billy Meller third now. They go through all bends down into there, but I wonder whether Billy Mello will leave it until Mansfield again to pull off the moves that he did in race one, or whether he can get close enough uh, on the start finish tra straight to get some slipstream and have a look into Coppers. He doesn't look like he's close enough at the moment. There is Curtis Wright, Shelton, Mella, then Craig Neve, who's got back past Matt True Love, of course. Craig will have that power advantage on the start finish straight. There is Curtis Rothwell, and then it's 169 and 164. Sam Boy is 169, 164. Matt Stevenson, the leader of the pre national thousands. Right, it is with the advantage, and Billy Bella has already got past there. Adam Shelton, so he's got that done on the back straight, the park straight. Craig Neve and fourth just drifting away now. 119 is Andrew Stockdale there on that bright red and black machine. How much longer can Curtis Wright hold on to this lead? I suppose you could argue that Billy Meller, if he does, oh, he's, he's going to do the same thing again then into the chicane. Uh, if Billy Meller does win this race, it won't be too much of a problem for Curtis. I don't think he'll do uh, that much in terms of trying to prevent him from doing that. He's not somebody that features in his championship and Curtis has got a job to do. So uh, he'll be probably a little more concerned at the fact that Adam Shelton beat him in race one but Billy Mellon not a major worry to him at the moment but uh, it's just a matter now of where Billy Mellon will decide to make his move he's got a good corner speed going into Barn Corner that's Michael Neves and Shane Pearson those guys are in sixth and seventh on the start finish straight there is right on the number 74 BMW and then on the number 87 BMW is Billy Mello. I wonder if he'll do the same as what he did to Adam Shelton a minute ago. Get the drive on the back park straight and then have a look up the inside into park corner. It's close and he's done it. That's a good move there from Billy Mello. But Curtis Wright is fighting back immediately through Chris Curve, but no, it's not quite happened for him. Billy Mello then takes the lead and surely will now just check out. He didn't make the best of starts, Billy Mello, but he's made up for it here and I'll be intrigued to see what his lap time is when he goes past the start-finish line now. Curtis Wright then dropped down to second, but he does have a nice gap ahead of Adam Shelton. There's Sam Boyers up ahead of Curtis Rothwell, number five. That is Matt Stevenson leading the pre-national thousands. Then Andrew Stockdale, and second in the pre-national thousands is number 17 there, Gary Woodward. In fact, Andrew Stockdale there is also pre-national, so he's technically now second. So the top three in the pre-nationals all locked together. And on circuit, they are 12th, 13th and 14th. This is the battle for third place. 
Adam Shelton has now fallen into the hands of Craig Neve. And uh, a bit further behind is Matt Trulov before you get to this bunch. Uh, Michael Neves, Shane Pearson, last year's Golden Era Superbike champion, and Stephen Parsons. Stephen Parsons raced the large part of last season in the pre-national 600 championship on a triumph and looked like he might be on his way to the championship and then just disappeared i don't know what happened uh, but didn't turn up for the final few rounds he's back at the start of this year though i'm not sure if he got himself injured actually i'll have to ask him when we get to alton park but uh, giraffe racing if you're wondering what that's about i've mentioned it a few times before um take a look at how long his neck is <laughs> it's got a rather long neck uh, I don't like saying that, but I've heard it mentioned so many times around the paddock that I just feel like I have to. Uh, and if you're going to name yourself Giraffe Racing, then you might as well be ready for a few comments there. The guys are running really close to the white lines there and the grass. And We had, of course, that rain earlier on, and it can be very slippy there. I mean, it's still dry conditions here at the moment. I'll tell you how dry it is. Billy Meller, a 130.814. And that is Phil Crow's. GP one lap record gone. Now, Phil Crow will be absolutely horrified to hear that his beloved Cadwell Park lap record has gone because uh, that was something he loved having. He's a local rider to these parts. Of course, Phil is over at the TT at the moment, so we send him all the best uh, of luck over there. But uh, when he returns from the TT, he won't be too happy to find out that Billy Meller has just taken his lap record of 30.8. That is shifting. There is Michael Neves, number 33, still in that battle with Shane Pearson and Stephen Parsons for sixth place. Matt Trulov, by the way, we've not seen him much of him. He's having a really lonely race, uh, bless him. He's in fifth place, though, on the 600, still doing a good job. There's 17 and 164, so that is uh, Gary Woodward that is now taking the lead of the pre-nationals. There is number seven. Uh, that's Tom Halifax from Alton on the night road racing Ducati. Uh, nice to see the uh, KIR bike out there still. And he's just been lapped by Adam Shelton, who's going to have to work hard here to keep Craig Neve at bay. These guys really fighting it out at the bottom of the mountain. Over the top they go and into Hall Bends. Shelton will want to keep hold of this. Craig Neve is currently fifth overall in the Superstock 1000 Championship. Craig is a very good rider on his day and could quite easily close down that gap and move into second or third overall in the championship. But Adam Shelton's lead at the moment is so large, it would take uh, someone pretty special to stop Adam Shelton from winning the Superstock 1000 Championship. Into Coppice we go. And this is Billy Mellett, your race leader, around Chris Curve. Fully in control ahead of Curtis Wright. Around the gooseneck down into Mansfield. He puts a lap on Stephen Bates on the tubes scaffolding BMW. Rookie vest on there for Steve, so it's his first season of racing. He's uh, around about seven, eight seconds ahead of Curtis Wright at the moment. As he tips into the mountain, you still can't even see Curtis coming out of the chicane. Over the top we go. And a bit of a wheelie all the way up to Paul Benz. Faultless performance so far from Billy after that bad start. I thought he might have a bit of work to do, but he's caught up to everyone well. He's looking over his shoulder. No one to be seen. There's Curtis Wright. Not that it matters too much anyway. This is now the final lap. And Adam Shelton looks like he's just done enough to hold on to third. The checkered flag goes out. Billy Mell has done the double then. Great stuff from him and a new lap record. Curtis Wright will take second. That's a good point for him in the championship. And across the line. Adam Shelton takes third place overall and beats Craig Neve to that place. Of course, that is the top three in the stocks as well. So Meller from right, Shelton, Neve, Matt Trulove on the uh, 600 in fifth, Shane Pearson with a solid sixth place finish. There's the top three in GP1 overall. Billy Meller, Curtis Wright and Adam Shelton. Then it's Adam Shelton from Craig Neve and Shane Pearson in the Super Stocks. In the pre-nationals, Gary Woodward, the winner from Matt Stevenson and Andrew Stockdale. So the championship points then. Curtis Wright has a nice lead there over Adam Shelton, but it's not that large. Phil Crow still in third place. Shane Pearson fourth. Dave Brook fifth. 
Billy Meller moves up into sixth place. Adam Shelton it is that leads the Superstock Thousands, though. It's a bit of a larger lead ahead of Shane Pearce and Dave Brooke. Craig Neve, Stephen Parsons and Adam Revel, and in the pre-national thousands, that's uh, changed a bit. Michael May still leads, but the gap's coming down. Jack York second, Matt Stevenson climbs to third, ahead of Jonathan Panter, Gary Woodward and Peter Brown. Winner overall, Billy Meller. Billy, uh, a good weekend for you here at Cadwell Park. Uh, how have you enjoyed it? Yeah, it's been a perfect weekend. Uh, brilliant club and everything. Uh, give me some a bit of work to do off start there, but... Uh, Really enjoyed it. Good to be back on top step. Winner of these two events, pre-national thousands. Gary, uh, good racing here this weekend at Cadwell Park, and uh, you managed to get the better of Matt Stevenson there. Yes, finally. Yeah, he's so quick, so it was a fantastic achievement. Have you got anyone that you'd like to thank at all? Yes, definitely. I'd like to thank uh, the family, my dad, um, my partner, Mel, fiancé, um, Fuchs so clean, uh, Billy Meller for uh, helping me along, giving me some tips and uh, Nick Wood Logistics for some sponsorship and finally, most of all, Able Engineering. Winner of the Superstock Thousands here, Adam, I recall probably six years ago maybe, seven yeah. years ago, when you were here as a Super Team winner. Uh, of course, it's your home circuit and here you are as a winner again, Superstock Thousands, you must be very happy. Yeah, I mean, every step we take on the bike is just massive learning curve for me um, we had a real good test day good wet sessions in a row to get it set up down dry was sort of a new thing for us uh, we did what we could um, and it's working every lap getting a bit quicker and a bit quicker and that's the main thing so just want to say a massive thanks to uh, Scruff's work where five ways for sorting my helmet out in double time so thank you very much uh, Rob Spink for his contribution Amanda Walker walkhead.com um, ben Nicholson for buying me his hire. Cheers, mate. Appreciate that. Everybody else, all the shearers, everyone here to support me. Local, love it. Thank you very much. All right. Cheers. That's it from Cadwell Park in Lincolnshire. From here, we move up north to the west a bit. Alton Park is up next at the end of June. We'll see you there.